Computer, how much do I have left to spend on video games? Well, after you bought the billboard, the eye repair surgery, the thumb removal and foot attachment surgery, you have minus $200,000 to spend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so what if we commit tax fraud? Again. Yeah, you're right, it's no fun the second time. Who knows, maybe video game prices have gone down a little bit, so maybe I can afford some. I mean, it is tax frauding season. Uh. Video games have been around since dinosaurs walked the earth, so of course when older video games are found in really good condition, it's gonna be something a few people are gonna wanna go after. There's nothing like saying I own Home Alone 2 complete in box before realizing that you keep your games like this and constantly use them as a snack tray. A lot of the time, to find a game complete in box is just exciting. You get to own a piece of history in its full glory, but holy sh** does it cost a lot of money. Never in my life would I expect cardboard to cost this much. The reason why games can get to this kind of price for having all of this junk with it is that back in the day it was common to throw out these boxes that came with the game. However, that often meant throwing out the manuals too, and that stinks. I like these things. I never use them, but they're a neat set piece for my dining room table. But this is just a small portion on how a game's price can go up, and a lot of factors can play into it, like what's the condition? Does it have all its pieces like the manual and the plastic wrap? Was it recalled in a favor of a newer game coming out? And what kind of cheese? does it smell like. You mainly see higher priced items being from rare games. When the ET games are dug up at the landfill, they find their ways online. The prices may vary, but I've seen them go for $4,000. Imagine playing $4,000 for an Atari game, let alone ET. Couldn't be me though. The, the listing was a little bit uh, uh, misleading. But sometimes you get games that you never really heard of, and for me that was the Extertainment Mountain Bike Rally and Speed Racer Combo Cart. What a mouthful. Yeah, I know. I had the same questions too when I saw this. Like, what the f*** is an exertainment and what is it doing on my mountain bike? You know those exercise bikes with the screens on them? Well, guess what? They made one back in the 90s, just with more of a thick screen than usual. This one was called the Life Cycle and was actually a Super Nintendo accessory. It was made to work with games like this one, but you could also use it as a normal exercise bike if you don't like being lame. Of course, this thing was expensive when it first released. I mean, normal exercise equipment is expensive. Do you think slapping a CRT on the front would make it any cheaper? Don't say yes to be funny. Yeah. So when you have an accessory like this that nobody really bought, a game like this that required that accessory is not useful. So if the bike broke or just became worn down over time, they would just often throw out the game. It makes this one more of the rare Super Nintendo games, going for around $2,500 to sometimes over $3,000 depending on its condition. The rarity of a game can really help it make it into the big leagues of cash cowing, and one of that is the most popular, which is the Nintendo World Championship cartridge. Ah, I can check that one off the list. I mean, we all know the story. Doesn't mean I won't tell it again, though. Nintendo held a contest back in 1990, and the first place prize got to keep the cartridge they played on. And in a Nintendo Power magazine, there was a contest to win a gold version of the cartridge. And this was only given to about 25 people. Talk about rarity. 25 is not a lot, so who knows how many are truly left out there in the world. It makes it one of the rarest NES games to this date, with prices going up to $20,000. But it's not the rarest. I mean, it was cooked rare, but more like a medium rare rather than actually rare. You hate my cooking. I mean, if you seasoned it properly, I would say no. But instead, it's so bland, you made it look like Home Alone. Something that boggles my mind is when a game was never meant to be in circulation, but it gets put into circulation somehow. We've seen this with games like NBA Elite 11, where the game was recalled right before it should have been sold, but it found its way into hands of some consumers. Now, remember the game World Class Track Meet? It was a game on the NES that utilized the power pad. You can run and place to control people on the screen. Now what if I told you that this game was actually called Stadium Advance at one point and it was recalled after Nintendo saw the game and wanted to publish it themselves? So that's what it's like being catfished for the fourth time. It's really interesting because the box alone for this game can get you up to $10,000! What?! The game is extremely rare. Its existence wasn't really known about until much later in the NES's lifespan. In 2020, a complete copy of the game sold for $13,000. However, that's not even the highest bid, as later, someone would find a sealed copy that went for $41,000. The reason for this game being so rare was that it was pulled off the shelves and meant to be destroyed, but the fact that it was on the shelves in the first place meant that people did buy it. It's stated that 200 copies got into circulation, and of that 200, only 20 or known to really exist. It's crazy how something like this can be worth so much money, but it does make a little bit of sense. These things aren't going to last forever, and stuff like stadium events is a part of history, as without it, we wouldn't have known the truth. So, while it might suck that these prices are very high, they're more justified because of the rarity of the device. Now, how do you justify Super Mario Bros. selling for $2 million? 
Has the world gone mad? Why, in any scenario, would an NES game that isn't that rare sell for this much? It mainly has to do with the condition of the game. If it comes in the box and has all its goodies with it, then really it's gonna get a higher price than a loose copy on some shelf in a game store. I mean, look at my copy of Home Alone 2. It's the best looking NES game I own. I bought this for 30 bucks. I mean, it also helps if the game is more well known. Some people might have never heard of Home Alone 2 for the NES, but everyone knows what a Mario is. Okay, fine, but does it really warrant a price like this? Let me check. It's too much of an opinion, and I'm not allowed to give those anymore. I mean, a product is worth however someone wants to pay for it, and if someone wants to buy Super Mario 64 for 1.5 million, well then sh buy my copy. I got student loans to pay off and I need to buy 14 PS5s just because. Video games contain so much different art that it's probably the highest form of art for a lot of people. I mean, it's no different from a painter sneezing on a canvas and getting billions off of it. But fundamentally, is there more interpretation that comes with video games than we are led to believe? In my eyes, no. If a video game wants to be deeper and have a deeper meaning, it will go out of his way to show you that. In a lot of senses, a narrative heavy game really does that. But for Mario, Zelda, and Punch-Out, while they can allude to deeper meanings, really, the whole point of it is on the surface level. So what do you get out of paying this much for a game that looks like this and plays with this controller? But there is a part that I'm leaving out, and it's what makes these games like Mario 64 so expensive at auctions. Is it the fact that people see value in the game to an extent that they pay the same price as a really nice house for it? No, it's more like the game was sealed in its factory seal and people go crazy for that. It's kind of like how the original film reel for some movies get selected to be put in a vault for preservation. People who collect video games do the same thing. They collect them to preserve them and to make sure future generations get to have them because without them, we would miss out on a big part of history. So when a sealed copy of Super Mario 64 comes into circulation many years later, it's for that reason, preservation history to show what a clean copy of the game may look like. And since it's popular, people will know of the game, so it makes it more interesting than, say, Home Alone 2 on the NES. While personally I don't see much value in a sealed classic game over an open cartridge, a lot of people spend their lives trying to find every game in the world with its original packaging, just to make sure it lives on just that much longer. Older games have been dying out more and more. This technology isn't invincible. And soon enough, every NES, Super Nintendo, and even N64 game might not be functional. You think prices are high now? Well, it's only gonna get worse as the years go on. As many people look at these auctions as a means of profit, rather than just making sure that we knew these games existed. It's why dumping ROMs is so important, because while the physical media might die one day, the software that makes it up can live on elsewhere. However, for me, it's just not worth it. I like my set pieces, but I also like to play my games. Having sealed copies of a game just to sit around has no appeal for me. So you're saying you don't need a copy of Mario 64 for 1.5 million? I'm not saying that at all. I mean, while I really don't need it, I am bored. I want to kill time. So you know what? Get ready. We're going to commit some tax fraud. Guess who got caught and has to go to court tomorrow? This sucks. With no money, how am I going to bribe the jury? Okay, surely that won't work. That actually worked?